The Latanian ruler, the Witch King, ruled over his kingdom with an iron grip. The arts practiced by the king surpassed all, and the melodies of his compositions can drive the life from a man. Reviled in history as the most powerful caster Terra has ever seen, he ruled Latania for decades. Living for around 150 years, he lived through many historic events, and was one of the perpetrators of the Battle of Four Emperors that saw the destruction of Gaul. He was, however, eventually deposed by the twin empresses who now rule Latania, but his cause lives on in the voice of Terra, threatening to overcome all his descendants and return to life reborn as a shadow of his former self. And now his voice lives on in what may be his final descendant, the focus of today's video, Ebenholz. Graf Franz von Rutka, aka Ebenholz, is an amazing character introduced in the Lingering Echoes event. A direct descendant of the Witch King, Ebenholz's life has been filled with torment due to his relative since his conception. He lost his parents during the purge carried out following the Witch King's fall. Him, Kreide, and other relatives of the Witch King were kidnapped by the King's loyalists. These remnants planned to use the voice of Terra to recreate the power of the Witch King and resurrect him. In order to achieve this, they implanted the voice into all of the King's relatives. This implantation is what would separate Kreide and Ebenholz. Luckily for the two, they were saved by the agents of the twin empresses. Due to implanting the voice of Terra, all the other descendants had died, and only Ebenholz and Kreide remained. Ebenholz, despite being saved, was not free, and was raised to be a duke, but this supposed kindness was actually a cage for the young boy preventing him from ever escaping his legacy. Ebenholz is a very opinionated young man, and quickly recognized this noble life for what it was. He recognized that he was being used as a puppet to maintain support for the empresses, and he craved the non-noble life, wishing to abandon all titles, to live as just a person. As such, he agrees to Gertrude Strollo's plan to extract the voice of Terra during Sony's farewell concert. However, Ebenholz lacked the critical information as to the true purpose of this plan, and this would cause the tragedy that would cost him the only friend he had ever known, and his final known relative, Kreide. While auditioning for Sony's concert, he would meet Kreide, but the two would not recognize each other as so much time had passed since the two were young. The two would form a duo and a close friendship would blossom between the two, and they would eventually be accepted by Sony to play in his concert, even getting personal lessons from him. This kindness, however, this joy was not to last. Strollo's plan, her true plan, was not to free Ebenholz of the voice. Her plan was to extract the voice of Terra from both Ebenholz and Kreide during the concert, and use it to get her revenge against those who wronged her, both the remnants of the Witch King, and the agents of the Twin Empresses. The voice has an unintended side effect while the two young boys are together. It lessens the effect of Oripathy. That sounds like a great thing. However, it doesn't just render it dormant. It renders it dormant while accelerating the effects of it. And as such, Infected will receive a temporary reprieve before dying an even faster death. Kreide and Ebenholz being together had even sped up this process, as the two voices leaking from them wished to reform into one. The voice always caused Ebenholz a lot of pain, but Kreide's hope could actually soothe this, and for the first time in his life, Ebenholz had true relief from the voice, and this changed something in him. Instead of wishing to be free from the voice of terror, he wished to free Kreide from it. He was willing, after knowing this boy in his mind at this stage, for just a little while, to take all of his pain into him and sacrifice his own life. The concert was to be held regardless of the risks though, but Ebenholz does do some investigation on the side. During his investigations, he meets up with an agent of the Empress's, Beagler, discovering an underground sanctuary where the remnants of the Witch King were studying his teachings. The remnants release a group of poisonous originium slugs into the infected area in order to kill Ebenholz and anyone else 
that is involved. It is, however, suppressed, but after its suppression, Ebenholz battles with Strollo. However, this Harry Potter duel was not in Strollo's favor, and despite being a MILF, she is quite handily defeated by Ebenholz. Sony deduced the goals of the remnants, and in order to protect the two boys, he composed a new song, one that would hold the voice within himself so that he may be the sacrifice instead of Kryle or Ebenholz. Sony himself is a fairly underrated character, and he goes through a lot of suffering for these two boys he really doesn't know at all. It's very admirable on his end. Unfortunately, it was all for naught. The process of composing the song almost kills him, which is a noble sacrifice, but Strollo had other plans during the concert. The concert seems to be going well, with our trio performing perfectly, until Strollo interrupts the melody, causing things to melt down. The infected begin rapidly showing symptoms of late stage aripathy, until Cryde steps forward to take all the vice into himself. Originium crystals begin to break through his skin, and he begins his transformation. He, despite the immense pain he's going through, comforts Ebenholz during this time, and encourages Ebenholz not to give up, to move past the misfortunes that have stricken them both, and to look to life's blessings, to look upon their meeting again, to look upon the good times they spent together. Before being overcome by the rampaging will of the Witch King, Kryde asks Ebenholz to live on, not just for himself, but for Kryle as well. And if losing his friend wasn't bad enough, Ebenholz now bared witness to the monstrosity that stood where his friend once did. A reborn shadow of the Witch King, and it is up to Ebenholz to carry out the sentence. He himself is the one who truly kills Kryle. Even if you could argue that Kryle was already dead, in Ebenholz's mind, he is the man who struck the final blow. He may have protected all those around him, but his guilt is immense. Allowing no one else to carry his body, Ebenholz carries Kryde to his final resting place. The crystals that broke through his skin now puncturing Ebenholz in many places. Ebenholz comments on the pain of the infected life, but it is nothing compared to what he is going through. His emotions have completely run rampant and his sorrow is immense. He seals Kryle away. Inside of the Afterglow Theatre where they performed, he uses his arts to create an impenetrable room to act as Kryle's tomb, hoping that his friend will finally know peace. Following the events of Lingering Echoes, Ebenhold's Giants rules Island. His life won't be easy going forward and infected never is. But he's gone through so much suffering that he will find a way to manage. And I hope that no more suffering comes at him for a long time. It will of course come at him much sooner than we would hope, because Autoria and Viviana's event has Ebenholtz as a large character in it. But I haven't read it, so I can't confirm what occurs to our poor goat son. Ebenholtz is an amazing character, and anything short of character assassinating him in the next Latania event won't change that, which is why I'm confident in making this video. His story is one of overcoming life's hardships. Ebenholz has been suffering since day one, and he hasn't given up yet. He's come close, but despite all his suffering, those around Ebenholz who cared for him have kept him going. From Kreide to Sony, he has been surrounded, at least recently, by good people, and now the good people of Rhodes Island will not abandon him. His desire for freedom, so great, that he would have given up all of the benefits of nobility, and now has, in order to achieve it. Despite his initially selfish motivations, after meeting his old friend Kryde, he changed, being more than willing to give up his own life so that another may live. That pat was not to be, but Ebenholz persists anyway. He will not abandon the life that Kryde has allowed him to live, and going into the future, he will ensure that Kryde's will, as well as his own, lives out so that one day all of Terra may be free from the Witch King's influence. Overall, Crydae is amazing, and so is Ebenholz. And you should definitely read Lingering Echoes if you haven't already. Be good people, and I will talk to you next time.